Yeah, well, I just wanted to make this um, section self-contained and more or less have all the language constructs of Gringo inside. That's actually why I just repeat the weak constraints. So sorry for those who already have seen them uh, in actually much more detail in the section on optimization. And those that see them now for the first time, I'd suggest that you go there because there I talk much more about the semantics. Anyway, weak constraints are like integrity constraints, just that they do not, once they apply, once their condition is satisfied, condition means L1 to Ln, uh, rule out the solution candidate. No, instead you pay a penalty. And this is expressed by this weight here. And uh, in this way, you can define objective functions, and you can and you can do you can define several objective functions, and each objective function has the same priority level. And then what you do with this, you implement lexicographic uh, optimization. You, if you have two stable models, you evaluate the penalties at the highest priority level. If both stable models have the same value. You go once down. If it's still the same, you go once down. Once actually one is smaller than the other and then you prefer this one. So more or less, this is, even though it, it re reads nicely declarative, is an instruction to the ASP solver to perform optimization and it optimizes the sum of the weights of the violated weak constraints. And if you don't want any, any lexicographic uh, uh, optimization, you just want to have one single um, uh, flat structure of an objective function, uh, then you simply leave this out. And if you leave it out, uh, then this is set to zero by the system. Just an example, this is again the example that I gave already in the, in the section optimization. So if you want to configure a hard disk, right? this is a hard disk, this is the idea. The hard disk has a price uh, and a capacity. And here, in this case, uh, I want to find, the actually, which is a bit strange, the lowest capacity of hard disks it's just syntax, right? And so whenever uh, such an atom here is chosen, uh, I pay uh, this, uh, this penalty, um, which is expressed by the capacity. Good. And in the same way, actually one can do this with minimize statements and they're actually equivalent. Again, I was telling that already in the optimization section, whenever you have several uh, weak constraints of this form, they can be gathered together by one minimized statement. In this case, when here, when I say several, this means more or less the instantiation, the ground form of these guys. But if you write this in first order form, this line corresponds to this line. And yet now actually you also get an idea why actually here you have these terms, because after all, it's the same trick that you want to apply there sometimes, as we've seen on the, on the, on the, in the, in the, in the previous uh, slide, where it's about modeling multi-set properties, right? So that's the same thing here. And you see here the, the ID is actually used to distinguish hard disk with the same price. Same idea. Okay, so um, anyway, I wanted to rush through and after all I had to, 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 to talk a bit more here and left and right. Hope you forgive me on that. And uh, let's next look at mm, what? More directives. In fact, both types of optimization statements, that it be weak constraints or minimize or maximize statements, are already um, directives and directives in the sense that they direct the solver or the system to do something rather than part of the logic program, right? And with the minimize statement, this was made explicit by putting a hash. And as you will see the guys here on this slide, they all have a hash in front because this indicates a directive to the solver, let's say a meta statement, right? That is not part of the actual program. One handy thing is the show statement, which uh, controls the output. And uh, the idea is often, well, you may have, um, uh, well, I don't know, several predicates, but only one or two predicates uh, make up a solution, or these are the ones you want to, to show in the end. And uh, a typical trick is actually that, first of all, you suppress printing all uh, predicates and you write a show dot. But if you write this, nothing will be output, nothing will be shown at the end. And then afterwards, you write the ones you want to show. Like for instance, queens slash two. You want to show all atoms of the predicate queens which that has two arguments. If there's one with three arguments, it would not be shown, right? Okay, this is more or less the standard way. And one thing to, to customize a bit the output is to use uh, this predicate here where you have a term and a condition. And more or less, whatever you, you have, you can build this from from the, the, the variables and the, and, and, the, and the literals that you have here as a condition. And this may be arbitrary complex and 
the term that you build does not have to appear beforehand in the stable model. So in this way you can actually uh, c compose things the way you want to. Okay, this is for the output. Uh, projection, that may be a bit, bit technical and it's, it more or less tells the solver also not only which uh, atoms to show, but also when it enumerates, uh, somehow the idea is to make a projection on the solution. So if the solution was found with the atoms that that, that you delineate here with the projection, it will not look for a second solution which coincides on this set of atoms, like the projection in, in databases. Okay, again, I'm just doing hand waving here a little bit. So this is for put, if you want to enumerate answer sets and you only want to, to confine them to a subset of the alphabet. Okay, heuristics is a statement that more or less biases a little bit the solver heuristic. So you more or less have, again, a, con a, a conditional literal here. And uh, with these uh, heuristic modifiers, you can say, okay, if I have, I don't know, a certain predicate like an action or a fluent, right? I want to say that actions are, if I have the choice between a fluent, by making a fluent true or an action true, I make first the action true or false or whatever, right? And this is something you can bias. The thing is, uh, and the, uh, let's say the idea is here that you do not completely eliminate the heuristics of the solver. Uh, but you rather influence it a little bit, you give it a bias towards things. And only do this if your encoding is really nickel and the encoding is, is perfect, because th this, the, otherwise this becomes hacking, right? But anyway, it gives you a quite powerful tool uh, at your fingertips. And last but not least, um, for some reason it may be nice to, have, um, to check acyclicity. And again, you have more or less a condition here. And then depending on the instantiation, you may instantiate the two variables. And then this, what, what will happen, the solver will also check whether the graph you here construct on the fly is acyclic or not. Again, for certain applications, this comes in really handy, but you have to get a feeling for that. And that may not be now when you listen to me for the, on this video. So I better zip it. And let's actually now move on to look at the intermediate formats. So, you know, Stay tuned.